Welcome to Service of the Word at St. Paul Lutheran Church, East Lansing, Michigan. So happy to see you today. Well, as we record this on Wednesday, and we look out, we were on the way here, we looked over on Abbott Road, and there was a guy, a, a surveyor, and we wondered, what was he doing? And then we look over in the parking lot, the water is up to just the, the, uh, the bottom of people's door, uh, windows that they would roll down. So we, we pray for those who, uh, uh, through this terrible time, and we have people in our congregation we're praying for with health issues, always praying for. So always for prayer. But this is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. When Amos reports his vision of God judging Israel for its mistreatment of the poor, he becomes a threat to power of the priests and the king. John the Baptist also so speaks truth to power, and Herod has him killed. In Herod's, it's Herod's fear that Jesus is John returned from the dead, who made her hope for the oppressed. All the prophets killed through the ages are alive in Jesus. We are called to witness to justice in the company with them and to proclaim God's saving love. Now the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now we listen as God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, and song. We're watching the bees walk down the parking lot. They're pretty cool. We like them a lot. Anyway, the first reading is found in the book of Amos, chapter 7. 
verses 7 through 15. Artemis is not the kind of prophet attached to temples or royal courts. Rather, he is an ordinary farmer from Judah, the southern kingdom, called by God to speak to Israel, the northern kingdom. God's word of judgment through Amos conflicts with the king's court prophet, Amaziah, who, whom Amos encounters at Bethel. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord is standing beside a wall built with a plumb line and with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to hear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock and said, the Lord said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's share Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. In Jesus, all of God's plans and purposes have been made known as heaven and earth are united in Christ. Through Jesus, we have been chosen as God's children and have been promised eternal salvation. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. To be, to to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory, 
in him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel. St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Thanks Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus and his disciples began to track attention, Mark recalls the story of John the Baptist's martyrdom. Like John, Jesus and his disciples will also suffer at the hands of those opposed to the gospel of salvation. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like the one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I have beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself has sent men who arrested John, bound him, yet put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him because of that and wanted to kill him. But she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers, the leaders of Galilee. When his, when his daughter uh, Salome came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he swore him, swore to him, Whoever you ask of me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier to guard with soldiers in orders to bring back John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison, but his head on a platter gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Telling people the truth can be difficult. And of course, hearing the bad news can even be more difficult. The P.T. Byram effect is where phrases are generic, but we connect with them because we like to have a connection. For example, it's say, okay, you have a will to succeed, and then all at the same time, but you have a, you have you're worried about succeeding, which can both be true and is human nature at the same time. Of course, psychics and fortune tellers, even fortune cookies, fit in this category. Of course, life is more pleasant when it's meaningful, more meaningful when it's pleasant. Rather, we tend to prefer believing positive things about ourselves rather than negative ones. You can say, if you say something nice about someone, they will believe you. 
but in turn, we're more likely to buy into the Byron effect when it's describing us or our lives in a pleasant manner rather than a critical one. I remember my mom told the story. She visited a psychic. My dad went to Mayo Clinic to get some tests done, and she went to see a psychic, wondering what's going to happen here. And this, the psychic, of course, made connection with her. Here she is. She's not a state. She's at the Mayo Clinic. And what she said to her was going to be a long period of illness, and my mother worried for years because of this reading, which never came true. Perhaps is why we can sugarcoat what we said. For example, when someone from the South says, God bless your heart, with a smile, they're telling you, what in the world were you thinking? This may bring the hearer comfort, but not to understand what is really being said. But speaking God's truth is a different level. When obeying God and telling people the message God wishes to be passed, there is no sugarcoating, even though speaking this message to power can bring a severe consequences like we see today in exile or death. In our uh, pastoral leadership and when at the seminary, they always said you need to be self differentiated You don't say things because people want to hear them. You speak things because they are the truth. And that's what we try to be as our compass, is speaking the things that need to be said, regardless of how they're received. Of course, it's like when Amaziah told King Boam, uh, Jeroboam, the first king of the ten tribes, go to Israel, Amos has conspired against his kingdom, and they cannot withstand his word, which is, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from this land. Wow, that's not a message you want to hear. This is in response to many people who had great wealth and were so rich they owned just not just one, but two or three, but four homes and blinded by their riches, thinking God had prospered them for their righteousness, they ignored the terrible oppressions they were inflicting on the poor and the weak. And this was against God's will. They also ignored the Ten Commandments and worshipped two golden calves. Certainly both were a recipe for disaster. Amos did not claim to be a prophet, but simply an everyday person, a herdsman, and a dresser of sycamore trees. The Lord said, instead of attending your flock, go and prophesy to my people Israel. So the, this person of faith, his qualification, does what God asks him is exile. Unlike others who appealed to God and changed their ways so their life will be spared, Job, if he repents instead, exiles Amos. He didn't say, ah, I see the error of my ways and told his people, folks, you need to share what you have. You need to not oppress people. We need to share our riches. But instead of that, it was much easier to exile Amos. And of course, we know later the temple was... Uh, the temple was destroyed, of course, uh, Jeroboam indeed was to die. Now we can fast forward to another prophet and king from the gospel. Israel had not had a prophet for 400 years, yet there's a man in the wilderness who was fashioned diet, diet uh, uh, challenged, and he is baptizing people in the River Jordan. And like the prophets of old, asking people to repent. The king this time around is King Herod Antipas, who has divorced his wife to marry the wife of his half-brother, Philip Herodias. Now here, John the Baptist speaks truth to power and rebukes Herod, telling him it's not lawful to marry your brother's wife. This is based on Leviticus 18.16. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. And 20.21 20, says, if a man takes his brother's wife, it is impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. Wow. So what does Herod do? Well, he went ahead and he imprisoned John and Herodias. Excuse me, Herodias. She had a judge against him. She wants to kill him. But Herod knew that John, who knew him, respected him because he's a righteous and holy man and protected him. Then, my friends, the plot thickens. At Herod's birthday banquet for the elite, Salome, a 13 to 14 year old girl who was Philip's daughter, did a dance. Herod is so pleased that he blurted out, Ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. 
That had to be quite a dance. And he said, my sword, or whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. When Salome asked her mother what she should ask for, Herodias saw her opening. Here it is. Ask for the head of John the Baptist. So she asked for the head of John the Baptist on a platter right now. Here Herod was between a rock and a hard place. He wanted to protect John, but yet here he had given a oath. An oath was everything then. If you refuse the people who witnessed this and said he did not keep his oath or alternatively would kill someone he worked hard to protect. What should he do? To save face by not refusing his daughter, he had a soldier behead John and brought the head on a platter which he gave to the girl who then gave it to her mother. The disciples laid John's body in a tomb. How times changed. Now, 13, 14 year old, what we want? Well, I'd like a cell phone, I'd like an iPad, I'd like clothes. I mean, it's different what people ask for, but asking for a head on a platter, quite a drama, quite a drama. Well, but these two disastrous stories are not the end of the, end of the story. When Herod heard about Jesus in many acts and preaching, he was perplexed. When one of us not be a raised John the Baptist, how scary is that? This is the person that I had beheaded. And how scary is that? And, and his final encounter with Jesus, of course, was when Jesus was sent to Herod to judge him and Herod under the ball. He didn't make a decision. He just sent him back. You do it. So no, they're not doing the story. Even though it appeared the power won a victory over truth in Amos' exile and John the Baptist dies, the story of Amos, a herdsman and simple tree stripper, continues to stay as an example of having faith in God and willing to do what God wants us to do while northern Israel was defeated and the king died. For John, the integrity of his witness trumps all of Herod's sinful and corrupt actions. What happened to the people in power seems like the most tragic. God calls us faithful to do exactly what God wants us to do. Just as seemingly ordinary people of faith deliver an important message, we are called to do the same, my friends. To look to the upside, read what Paul, when he says we are blessed by God, goes by God and are heirs to the kingdom. This is, a, this is kind of chilling. God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. This was the foundation before creation. He chose us. Good news indeed. We don't choose Christ. Christ chooses us. God chose us. We are sent from earth worship each week then to proclaim God's in breaking reign to all the powers that profess to rule the world. Through us, God speaks words of peace, love, and faithfulness in challenging the world's violence, hatred, and treachery. Although sometimes when people want to talk about social justice and they're adamant about it, but they really lead very, very comfortable lives, one has to wonder. But at any rate, I think for us in reading this, being faithful, First of all, being faithful. And second of all, go and do what God asks to do. From this we go and tell everyone what he has done. Amen. Now the hymn of the day, let justice flow like streams. Justice flow like streams of sparkling water pure, enabling growth, refreshing life, abundant cleansing sure. Let righteousness roll on as others cares we heed, an ever-flowing stream of faith translated into so may God's plumb line straight define our measure true, and justice right and peace pervade this world our whole life through. Let us share the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. He ascended to heaven. At the sits at the right hand of the Father, who will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Now we listen as we share the prayers of the church. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. You gather your people into the body of Christ, where your church is wounded, heal it, where it is right, strengthen it, where it is divided, reunite it, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. From before the foundation of the world, you are God. Revive ecosystems destroyed by human greed. Curb our desires to put wealth ahead of the health of all who call this planet home. In your mercy. Through our prayer. You establish equity and make justice within every nation, tribe, and land. Cause laws to be written and customs to be observed that protect the most vulnerable. In your mercy. Through our prayer. On the cross, your beloved Son endured pain and death. Bring healing to those in need, hope to any in despair, and comfort to the dying. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. You send your Spirit into this community of faith. Empower our ministries that serve and build up local communities. Nurture our partnerships with other community organizations. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protecting God, provide care and compassion for those who serve in our armed forces, especially Beth and Ryan, Jonathan, Jacob, Noah, Irene, and Alex. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, deepen our care for those who are bowed down with illness or sorrow and those who are undergoing transition in relationships, occupation, living situation, or health condition, especially Aaron, Carolyn, Chip, the family of Colleen Sarman, Craig and family, Dan, David, Jim and Sherry, John, 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 Jordan, Kay, Lawton, Lyra and family, Liam, Linda, Lizzie, Marge, Mary, Pastor, Sarah, Randy, Rick and Kathy, Sherry and Wanda. And all that we name now aloud and in our hearts. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. Directing God, guide our church's leaders, presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our Senate Bishop Pat, Pastor David Augustine, and Pastor Carl. We ask that you be with their respective staff as they live out their callings to serve. As we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one. Be with the leaders and the congregation, our Savior Lutheran Church in Saginaw, and all the churches in our community. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. All people praise you, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise for the lives of our loved ones who now rest in you. In the fullness of time, gather us with all your saints in light. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, in your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. So God's peace. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, Jesus, to pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Sending him, give thanks for saints.